What's going on, everyone? Welcome to another key shot quick tip. Let's talk about adding floating dust to your key shot scenes. As with any render, the little details are often what helps sell your final images. And one way to add just a bit more detail to your scenes is to create some atmospheric floating dust. Although Keyshot does not have a floating dust material, you can easily create the effect by using some basic geometry and attaching a flake geometry node to its material inside the material graph. To get started, you'll want to have the scene you're adding the effect to open, and you'll also want to be working from a version of Keyshot that gives you access to the material graph. From here, the first step is to bring in a piece of geometry from the model tab. I typically work with cubes when I'm creating something like this, but a cylinder or a sphere could work as well. You'll then want to scale the cube so that the geometry takes up the entirety of the camera view the same way you would when you're creating fog using scattering medium. This is going to end up being the substrate for your floating dust. With your cube or other geometry at proper scale, go ahead and change the material to something that's going to mimic dust particles a little bit more closely. I recommend using a transparent or cloudy plastic, but any number of materials will work. The reason I prefer transparent material is that you're less likely to get strange looking dust particles or unexpected shadows due to the fact that lighting can pass entirely through each particle. When particles are not transparent, areas where the shadowed side of a particle face the camera tend to look like floating black orbs or squares, which can appear unrealistic and even distracting. Once you do have your material set, it's time to add the flake geometry. Open your material graph and right click your workspace to open the geometry flyout menu. Then select flakes from the menu and attach the new node to the geometry input of your parent material. You'll then want to execute your geometry to see what your flakes currently look like. At the default settings, you can see that the flakes are square and appear far too large to look like actual dust particles, but we can easily change that. At this point, you're going to need to adjust the flake size and density to decrease the flake's visibility and make them seem more like floating confetti. The amount you'll adjust each parameter will depend entirely on personal preference, so adjust them until you have a size and density you feel works best for your specific scene. Obviously, at this point, the particles still don't feel quite like dust. The last step of the equation is going to be adding a little bit of depth of field to blur the particles so they are less defined to the camera. A little tends to go a long way, so start small, particularly if you don't want your scene to have a lot of visible depth of field. In this case, my f-stop is set to 50, so the entire scene is in focus, but it's still enough depth of field that flakes are blurred and they appear more like floating dust than the confetti-like appearance they just had. This trick is also a great way to create snowfall in your renders, and by adding just a little bit of motion blur, you can even use this method to create rain-like effects in your keyshot scenes. As always, if you're interested in more useful Keyshot content, hit that subscribe button and get notified as soon as new videos hit the channel. Don't forget to let us know your thoughts on this quick tip in the comment section below. And if you found this video useful, give it a like and share.